in anything to do with football and being in a firm, the main thing that pulls it all together is co- camaraderie, your mates. So when you go to football together, you look out for each other. And I think that's what comes across if you talk to anyone. It becomes a bit like a brotherhood, really. And I think that was the great thing about Cardiff City, is that it united the valleys. I was from the Merthyr Valley, he was from the Cannon Valley. We all got very tight, you know, because we used to go away together, you know. So those that were in the Saturday service, it was a very, very close-knit and tight-knit. Um, and you felt special because prior to that, it had been a very, as I said, as I said before, it was pretty much gang-orientated, depending on what area you came from. The Saturday service basically brought everybody together from different areas and were very tight. Yeah, you should feel brilliant. You should feel 100 foot tall. Uh, turn up, you'd have all your mates with you. All be trying to outdo each other on the train, but you knew when you got to the place that you were sort of one army going together. Just being part of something, really. Just growing up and being part of a group. Being a lad. You were with your group, and it's like somebody comes into your territory, and then, yeah, there's obviously an element of danger involved, uh, because you're going to get involved in violence at some point. <laughs> The, the actual fighting was actually, you know, hilarious. Lots of bouncing around, lots of sort of chasing. If you think of it, the, the amount of violence that was supposed to have happened over 20, 30 years, the amount of few injuries they've actually been, if you consider that, just goes to signify it was a lot of chasing around, really. If a mob had a certain reputation, like for argument's sake, if Millwall ran at you, you would really sort of like think twice about standing, you know what I mean? Whereas if, you know, if Crew were at the end of the road, you know, Cardiff would pretty much chase Crew. Uh, and you've got to remember, it was a very different, it wasn't the Premiership, it wasn't the Premiership, it was the First Division. And it was dangerous going to away matches. It wasn't like it is now where people can just go to pubs even near the opposition grounds. It was a dangerous thing to do, you know. The police didn't have control. So there was a certain identity with these group of people. If you went to a Liverpool match and that group of people weren't there, you were in trouble, you know, because they were the protection. Cardiff's reputation, I always say this, saved me from so many kick-ins because when you went away, that reputation tended to mean that people left you alone. So when, it was, when you were on your own, it was more dangerous. This is a great irony about football casuals and football fans that they don't understand people. If I was with the mob, as we called them, you were pretty safe because you could either hang back and let the few nutters fight or you could sort of like be safe among the numbers. The most dangerous thing was to be caught on your own. The one time I was caught on my own after we played Enfield, my own fault, and we got chip shop and Spurs turned up and they must have smelt me, I must have smelt the leaks or something and they just were on me straight away, you know, they gave me a bit of a kick in and I just got pulled behind the counter and I went back sort of bedraggled to the rest of the boys and they all kind of fell about laughing because my hair was sticking up and I had a bit of a black eye and I was going, I just got nailed by some spurs and they all kind of charged over, they'd long gone. That was the one time I was stupid and left on my own. So you get a kind of a, a sensibility about how to look after yourself as well. So whenever, whenever I was with the casuals of the mob, that was when I was safe best. It's still the same case now. I mean, people think just being, to the, being at the football, being, it's all about fucking fighting. Uh, but it's not, it's about your own identity. You're part of a group, you're part, you're part of a scene, you're part of a fashion, you're, you're, you know, you're all trying to outdo each other in a way. You, you know, you're like women with handbags. You've got other, you know, if someone's got a 500 pound coat, you'll probably want to buy a fucking 600 pound one. You've got to look the part. It's, uh, it's no good going to some northern outpost and looking like a bunch of scumbags. You have to get off that train and you had to look sharp and you had to show them that, you know, you were a firm and you were, you were together. And if you looked the same, then, you know, you were together. If, if, if you've, you've got to put yourself on show, ain't you? If you're landing on someone else's manor, you ain't going to get there in a fucking umbro top, are you? If you know what I mean, you want to be there looking the bollocks. Yeah, it's the best, best fashion show in England is a fucking football day. Yeah, definitely. Lucky people have lost buttons, rips, coming home, gutted, you know, shirts, you know, people's got stories of chunks taken out of them, police dogs, etc. Do you know what I mean? But even been cut, slashed, ammonia, <laughs> again, paint chucked over them. There's, there's loads of stories of people getting clothes ruined, and you're talking at the time probably half a week's wages on a jumper, shirt. But I've seen people getting into tear ups, uh, you know, mad, mad fellas who've got 500 pound coats on, they don't care, they, they just want to <laughs> get involved. Um, the, uh, uh, if a rip cord is the consequences, well, so be it. They'll buy a new one then. It was part of your life, yeah. I mean, Saturday was the, vo- was the main point of your week. Football was three o'clock on a Saturday then. There was no Sky TV or anything. And, you know, you're representing Portsmouth that day. Get down there, put a good show on. And uh, 
even if you don't have the rail, at least you look the part. You know, it's that great line in Goodfellas, all my life I wanted to be a gangster. I was a bit like, all my life I wanted to be a casual. I wanted to follow these lads. Everyone's got a hundred stories to tell, and every football fan in the world has, must have. If you've gone to more than 50 games, you've got 50 stories to tell, because if something mad always happens. We were outside Bristol, Cardiff City um, Central Station, and uh, Tottenham were wearing nice clothes, and we were only kids, we couldn't get in the pubs. So we used to do stupid things like hang around train stations. And um, we were outside this train station, and um, Bristol City's mob came out. I mean, literally, they mob. It was about not far off a thousand of them. Oh, and they, they came out proper, didn't they? Yeah. And Anthony ran. I ran out that way, and Anthony ran the other way, and they caught him, and they put him in a bin, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. he had this gorgeous white Giorgio Armani jumper on. Do you remember? Yeah. And uh, but the uh, ruined it. And we ran him for about a quarter of a mile. And as we came around this corner, there were police there. So I went, "Oh, Bill, turn round, run back to the van." We've got in the van, pulled the shutter down, all laughing and everything, and then we heard on the back of the van, get his fucking door open. And we said, there's nobody in here, like that. And uh, I said, get his door open. And we were all laughing. Suddenly the shutter came up and there was a policeman stood there, Alsatian in his arms like this, threw it in the van. I was sat nearest the shutter, dives on me. I'm rolling about with this dog. I've got 20 people clambering over my head and everything to get out of the van. And um, I got out and I bought a brand new Pringle jumper the day before in mustard. And I looked down and my arm was ripped to pieces like that. But I was more worried about my jumper. And then another time we were in Yeovil and he went under the stand yeah. and we'd been and Bristol City turned up. We went away with Merthyr, we were Cardiff, and Bristol City turned up. They used to happen quite often in non-league games. So he had to go and ring his mother, right, because it's record sports <laughs> night. Yeah. So he went under the stand and tell him what happened. Yeah, and uh, I was trying to speak to my mother, but I... There was like five or six Bristol City surrounding me and I couldn't get my words out so my mother was going, what's the matter, Anthony, are you okay? I said, yeah, 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 I was stuttering and then I just turned around and I said, look lads, I'm on my own, you can't do me here, can you? And they just wanted to chat actually, so they, they were okay, but... Uh, Fair play to Bristol City, they didn't beat him up because he's on the phone to his mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> tape, uh, sports night. Yeah. Liverpool against V7 Lords, I think it Remember was. Remember the theme music? Yeah, it was magic. And then the policeman said, right, you lot, get over here. Sat us all down on the pavement. So he sat us down, he said, right, put your hands on your head. So we all sat there, cross-legged, hands on our heads. And someone at the front started singing, oops, upside your head by the Gap Band. So we all started doing the dance. They went absolutely ballistic, the old Bill. And <laughs> they said, right, get back in that fucking van. They said, if you stop before you get to Seven Bridge, you're all nicked for the night. Wales were playing in Moscow. Um, in Russia in, in um, a championship playoff and there was a pre-arranged fight with um, the local Russian hooligan Spartak and CSK and after they gave us, they gave us a big hiding but it was just like fighting a mob of Cockneys, Tottenham or Arsenal or West Ham or whatever because they were dressed immaculately. They caught up with the internet, the internet and the books, all irrelevant. Uh, what was going on and then afterwards we were all there covered in co black and blue covered in blood court stripped and they were coming in asking oh do you like our labels do you like our mandarina duck courts and things like that you know and they and then they wanted to take us out club in because they said oh no we've beat you up now you're our guests in moscow you're our guests and it was just like the fight was over now they wanted to be your friends and that was uh, that was bizarre so you've always got a good story from an away game